understand how ancient prophecies are dominating today's international headlines join the rapture with faith noble adra a gifted prophecy teacher now here's today's message apprehensive of what is coming on the world for the heavenly bodies will be shaken according to one of the prophecies of jesus christ which i just read uh, there will be an unprecedented cosmic disturbances in the world especially from outer space we are talking about issues relating to the sun the moon the stars that will leave the people of the earth paralyzed with um, some form of uncontrollable fear and this will herald the approaching doom for man's civilization or bad governance of the earth and the lord described the effect of such drastic change in the weather patterns around the globe uh, which he explained will bring restlessness upon the nations of the earth as they try fruitlessly to find a solution but to no avail and that brings us to the subject for today climate change and global warming hallelujah you've been hearing all these things in the news uh, recently you saw uh, the tossing of the but we are in ghana here uh, we are having problem with our some of our coastlines talking about kita adan recently it was in the news you saw the sea so troubling this is what we are talking about climate change global warming what is it and how does it play in the whole end time agenda and i believe you have taken note of all that we've studied so far from the formation of the 10 nation confederation where's global financial crisis yet to come by getting the nations of the world heavily indebted um collapsing the major currencies of the world to foster uh, some form of a new financial order we spoke about uh, military we spoke about terrorism we spoke about um technology and biometrics rfid might control the relationship between those things and the mark of the beast we spoke about the goal of the uh, religious unity apostate church mystery babylon and um, an attempt to uh, deny the lordship of jesus christ among many other things we spoke about uh, ufos depopulation and many many things that uh, we spoke about on this program and today we want to look at um another major crisis which is being twisted by the global elites um, in favor of their quest for a world government many of you don't understand the issue of global warming or climate change uh, you just hear them but you need to understand scripture and prophecy to know what is really happening according to the, uh, the apostle john on the island of patmos one of those uh, disasters that will be happening in the last days will be nature the sun rebelling against man and will punish man there will be a climatic disaster it is prophetic but the world leaders won't tell you that oh well this is it they are going to make a big uh, thing out of every crisis as it is their custom that all that they need to foster a world government is the right major crisis and the nations of the world will accept a world government you see a, a number of meetings going on on this climate uh, stuff and I'm here to tell you it is not as if the climate is not changing it is really changing we can attest to extreme temperatures unusual heat waves globally resulting in droughts unusual floods severe weather patterns we are talking about hurricanes tornadoes typhoons all these things are becoming increasingly uh, visible in our days and the world leaders have been offering an answer by the public mostly people don't pay attention to this thing not even our governments or governments of the third world especially in an attempt to solve this climate and to present uh, whatever solution they have we have something that came into being called the un framework convention on climate change um, which was ratified in 1994. Uh, you saw a number of global meetings convened the first 
uh, climate conference was in berlin 1995 uh, we had another one they had another one not we i was not part <laughs> they, they had another one in geneva 1996 and then the popular one the kyoto protocol adopted in 1997 um, that was in japan we saw a number of binding agreements sought to reduce greenhouse emissions which i'll be explaining to you pretty shortly but this is a very technical area so uh, I'll just touch on it uh, briefly so that you can get it, and then I blend it with the Bible prophecies so that you can understand what really is going on. Hallelujah. So we saw recent conferences on climate change in Copenhagen, um, Cancun in 2010, that was Mexico, and the latest one in Deban, South Africa. They, all, they were all seeking this agreement on greenhouse cuts, emissions, and all these things, and the world is happy. They are happy. We have a, uh, there is a threat to our planet, our civilization, and then uh, there is a need for binding agreements, but many of the governments of the world need insight into bible prophecy to know what is really happening there are some few folks they're steering things explaining things their own way but please get it whether you like it or not <laughs> no amount of meetings is going to halt the changing climate you have one decision to make and to make it very quick because the whole creation is going to rebel against man in this last day the question is what is the cause of the changing climate is it what elites are saying or is something different are you getting it uh during the kyoto protocol that, that, that the one in japan um back in 1997 um, a number of gases were identified as the cause you hear most of the things they are talking about carbon dioxide they are talking about um most of the pollution we do like the natural gas we have here for generate as soon as you begin generating electricity with all these things uh uh, a lot of uh, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. We are talking about deforestation, all those kind of things. But during the Kyoto Protocol, it was not only carbon dioxide. They agreed on, on a number of gases that are contributing um, to the pollution uh, of the atmosphere, which they at least believe uh, it is a cause of climate change. The scientific communities are divided over the issue. Some believe we are causing it. Others believe we are not. But the Bible says that climate will rebel against man. Can you imagine the days are coming? The Bible says the sun will scorch men. And they will look for... You see, you have to think fast. Don't believe what they are telling you. Uh -huh. The sun will really scorch men. On this planet, it's not going to happen elsewhere. If you believe all the things written in the Bible, then know that it is coming. It's a warning. Jesus said these things will cause restlessness among the nations people's heart will be failing apprehensive of what is coming so when you see the thing happen when you see the signals it is a reminder of the things that are coming but what i've explained to you about the b system the global system how they work they make a big case out of the crisis in order to draw the nations into the web of globalization let's look at the argument how is co2 or carbon dioxide um or carbon emission the greenhouse gases in general uh, how are they contributing to global warming? These days it's hard to stay indoors if you don't have air condition. Yeah, that is what we are talking about. We are all feeling the heat. Uh -huh. We are talking about uh, when the sun rays hit the earth as light rays. We are going to classroom today. Um, some of the radiation uh, that absorbs and warms the earth is re-radiated back to space. So the rest is trapped. And this greenhouse gas is talking about methane, uh, water vapor and many many more uh, nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide these gases are designed uh, to really regulate the kind of heat that is retained here and the one that goes back uh -huh. there is a thin layer that uh, traps some of the heat down here and allow the rest to go back now the argument is that industrial pollution from man all the activities all those kind of things we are doing deforestation burning of fossil fuel coal oil natural gas as we are all doing around here according to the, this group of scientists or these elites uh, these gases are really increasing the presence of greenhouse gases in general uh, in the atmosphere and in that case is causing the thin layer that separates our atmosphere the, the immediate atmosphere where the heat is being trapped uh, this place is called the troposphere and the other uh, the thin layer is becoming so thick so it's just like a car when you close the glass and then uh, it receives the sun rays 
it becomes hot inside because the heat is not able to get back to it's not radiated back to space are you getting it so that is what we are feeling so the point they are pushing is that we are the cause we are doing all these things and a lot of this uh, carbon emission into the atmosphere is causing that thin layer that separates our earth's atmosphere from the rest of the distance uh it's causing that thin layer to become thick so we need to cut greenhouse gases are you getting it and i mentioned to you that under the kyoto protocol a number of gases we are talking about carbon dioxide nitrous oxide uh, methane uh, water vapor ozone all these are greenhouse gases but the at least emphasis most of the scientific community not most of them those of them who are advocating that it is man who is causing it their emphasis is only on the carbon dioxide which is coming from man and the question then is let's look at the measure of all these gases that are going into the atmosphere if you look at it critically the scientific data available shows that water vapor which is from the ocean and all this kind of uh, rivers uh, all, all the stuff we have they are also releasing these greenhouse gases and this is natural we don't have any control over it and they are emitting like 97 percent of all carbon emissions into the atmosphere and the one from pollution, all this industrial waste is just 1.9 percent of total greenhouse emissions. So, on what basis are they pushing eagerly that we are the cause? If we are the cause, then there is a need for governments of the world to come together. If we are not the cause, then why are they doing all these things? And look at it: 97 percent coming from uh, water vapor alone. Meanwhile, methane and other natural stuffs are also there. But the argument that the thing is to push this thing down the throat of nation. You see how governments go to many of these conferences. They don't even know what climate change. I'm not talking about our government as in Ghana. I'm talking about the third world country in general. They don't know. They only go and they package some hundred billion dollars for them. Aid and they go and struggle. Give us this aid. Compensate us. They don't even know what is happening. But these are all part of the B system. All the world needs is a right major crisis. They twist it, they explain it to you in a way. So if you look at the thing that the data that we have, climate change possibly is not from man. Uh, that 1.9 percent of carbon from man could not have changed the, uh, could, could not be the cause. Something really is happening. And to me, as a prophecy teacher, I know this is it. Jesus said. Uh, these things will be causing the nations to be restless and can you see they are restless every time meetings upon meetings to tackle global problems it is a way of god telling you that yeah time is running out we are getting to we are in injury time <laughs> are you getting it very soon the things that are going to happen they are not going to happen overnight god is not going to get up and command the sun to start scorching men he's going to begin slowly and seeing that something is happening <laughs> are you getting it so if you look at all these things two percent carbon emission from man couldn't be the cause of all this and it should be if it's greenhouse gas is really then it should be the ocean uh, the water vapor and the other higher contributors of uh, 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 greenhouse gases are you getting it but because the ordinary mind doesn't understand they are going to tell you all these things and this is necessary why are they doing all this as Adolf Hitler said if you tell a lie long enough people will start to believe it so when you say climate change we are causing it greenhouse gases pollution from this thing yeah gradually i know there are a lot of scientific minds listening to me they should look at the analysis just go into the climate change details and see what is really happening but i'm telling you if you are there you, you don't know jesus Christ. i'm telling you your days are numbered on this earth and disaster is coming there's no doubt about it this is ancient prophecies becoming today's realities and we are seeing it i hope you are seeing it so once they get a crisis just like i spoke to you on terrorism what is their response they have to rally the nations of the world they have to strip nations of their sovereignty they tell you this threat you can't face it alone of course changing climate we can't face it alone but we can feel it but what is happening what is the cause is it what they are making us to believe no <laughs> are you getting it i know i know some of you this may be bugging your mind but it provides them with this major crisis it provides them the ground to call for a global government not a nation state uh, let me give you some of the quotes from them in response to this climate change stuff al Gore, a former u.s vice president uh miss nowhere's about their objective for the climate change drive uh, when he stated and i quote climate bill will help bring about global governance but it is the awareness itself that will drive the change and one of the ways to drive the change is through global governance and global agreements on so get it climate change you hide it to the nations 
then they surrender they come together under the same umbrella so the same agenda are you getting it and um for my u.s president bill clinton in the 1990s state of union address uh, also made similar remarks this is what he said and i quote our overriding ev- environmental challenge tonight is the worldwide problem of climate change global warming the gathering crisis that requires worldwide action unquote so are you getting it um, the same crisis you call for a world government um, at the United Nations Framework Convention on uh, Climate Change meeting held at the Hague in 2000, uh, the former French President Jacques Chirac also added his voice, and this is what he he said, and I quote: "For the first time, humanity is instituting a genuine instrument of global governance. One that should find a place within the World Environmental Organization." which France and the European Union would like to see established by acting together, by building this unprecedented instrument, the first component of an authentic global governance. We are working for dialogue and peace on course. So get it. The crisis come, then the push for a global government is the response. Friends, and look at this interesting one. And this is the argument. Once they get a nation to agree that we are the cause, we are polluting the atmosphere, we are doing all this in deforestation and all these things, it means that they are also claiming that it's because our population is increasing. That is why pressure on the resources in the environment, they can't support that. God who created the earth. Are you telling me that he doesn't know how many people he wants to be? He said they should increase and, and be fruitful. It means he has provision for them. I know they will not believe that one, so I don't have any problem with that. He said we should be fruitful and fill the earth. That's your resources. The whole thing is that we are living in a fractured world. The creation has been corrupted by seeing rebellion. So, this is the argument. We are increasing. So, what do they do? Let's cut down population. And they are doing it in many ways. And we are seeing them every day. My friend, I'm telling you, the world very soon, they will not be very friendly to you. They will be very hostile to you because the prince of this world is coming. So, they are claiming population is increasing. And that is the cause. But let me remind you, friends, we believe we are the last generation when we compare the boiling evil of our days with the days of Noah. Remember that the days of Noah, the destruction came at the time human population was increasing on the planet. And today, the world is acknowledging that. Let me take you to what the scripture said in Genesis 6, 1. When men began to increase in number on the earth, that was the days of Noah men began to increase in their number on the earth the evils that triggered divine judgment of the flood were perpetrated at the time the population was increasing the same is the case today as we increase on the face of the earth we manufacture evil we invent wickedness wicked laws we try to distort sacred truths put in place by god ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you man has already pushed the self-destruction button it is irreversible disaster is coming the time is tickling very fast danger is inevitable are you getting it and god's response on this matter is clear and straightforward the bible says in the same genesis 6 5 going and god saw that man's wickedness was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Well, it happened when population was increasing. Today, we are inventing all kinds of wickedness because of increasing population. This planet will soon come under divine judgment from heaven. The watchmen must sound the trumpets so that the people can decide ahead of time. The people must choose between repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Or align themselves with this world and whatever the media tells you or whatever the, they, they tell you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, we are living in very decisive moment. I can tell you that, you see, the climate change, global warming. We have read in scripture several times that God causes the climate to punish. He can turn things in the heavens in response to man's rebellion. Are you getting it? Let's go to Job 37, 9 to 13. The tempest comes out from its chamber. The cold from the driving winds. The breath of God produces ice. And the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through them. At his direction, they swirl around 
over the face of the whole earth to do whatever he commands them he brings the cloud or the rain to punish men or to water the earth and show his love god brings all these kind of things to tell you that yeah the field is too much are you getting it so to me it might really is the cause of climate change i want to tell them that it is not the industrial pollution that is causing it it is man's incessant rebellion it is their multi-million dollar pornography industry which is marketing the pollen pollution of minds and emotions around the world it's the cause of nature to rebel it's what is causing nature do you agree with me it is the cause of abortion same-sex marriage homosexuality the cause of selfishness greed materialism secular humanism it is a cause of pleasure that this generation is worshiping daily that doesn't sound comfortable but that is why i'm here i'm going to tell you if you like follow this world and you regret ever being born into this world i'm telling you the signals are clear church get it it is not all the stuff they are talking about they don't want to face the truth you do, you want god to feel comfortable in the heaven and be pouring his blessings on you we are going to see more of those disasters don't forget as it happens it takes lives out of this world and are you prepared and i'm telling you the worst is here to come i know many of you are feeling uncomfortable but that is the opinion of god and you have to get it we ban prayer meetings from our schools nowadays and we, we don't want nature to rebel it's going to rebel more because they even obey god we are not obeying god and friends i'm not saying this so that the whole world will come to christ or this thing i'm telling them as a witness as a testimony to them so that that day when christ is playing it back to them they know that yeah god won them they had it being preached but they didn't listen are you getting it yeah so this is this is it instead of us facing the truth we want to say yes we are going to cut greenhouse emissions then climate will do what are you getting it let's go to job 38 35 3 to 35 job 38 33 to 35 do you know the laws that govern the skies and can you make them apply to the earth this is god asking they say let's cut greenhouse emissions and god is saying well friends get it do you know the laws that govern the skies and can you make them apply to the earth can you shut others to the skies and make them drench you with rain and if you command the lightning to flash will it come to you and say at your service this is what God is saying. So I, the, the people of the earth take counsel. God looking at them and say, Do you know the laws that govern the skies? You said you are going to cut greenhouse emissions instead of repenting. You said you are going to cut greenhouse emissions, pollution, and all these things. And then you are deceiving yourself and being deceived. Let me tell you, the people at the top, they know what they are doing. We have these Luciferians everywhere. They have been infiltrated everywhere across the face of this earth. And they are twisting everything in advance of the coming of the first and the chief son of Satan, the Antichrist. They are setting up that government as we speak right now and jesus is coming for a church without spot nor wrinkle and for you church and preachers who don't know this thing i'm telling you better wake up because i'm telling you the day jesus come for this church those members will be left with you they will hate you they will lead you to death i've seen visions of this countless times what will happen to preach i feel sorry for them but i know they don't know but god is sounding this warning to them and whoever has an ear let him hear what the spirit of god is saying to the churches are you getting it so by now you are getting it climate change is it from man or is it from god we have clues from the bible and let me take you a school of scientists also believe it is the sun that is causing climate change and not man are you getting this that the, uh, the, 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 the two sides some say man some say the sun and when we scan through the bible we see the preview of this thing in revelation 16 8 to 9 revelation 16 8 to 9 the fourth angel poured out his bow on the sun and the sun was giving power to scorch people with fire can you imagine that this one is just global warming the temperature is just around 45 degrees celsius and we are complaining we've been recording these heat waves around the u.s and other parts of the world and it's killing people but look at it the worst is just to come the bible says what the sun was giving power to scorch people with fire that is a taste of hell or death to tell them that the field is too much to tell them that God is still in charge of the universe, the skies, the millions of galaxies, and he can command them to do his bidding. Are you getting it? And verse 9. They were seared by the intense heat and they cursed the name of God. That tells you they will not repent, even at that time. When they are going through all this thing, they will still not repent. So I feel sorry for you. If you follow this word, these people are not ready to repent. If you know that you can't face it with them, then come to the cross. Come and obtain mercy today. Stop playing hide and seek in the church. Stop doing all this materialism corruption in the church because jesus will leave you behind to face it with them are you getting it 
the Bible says they were seared by the intensity and they cursed the name of God who had control over this place. Get it? He has what? Control over them. But they refused to repent and glorify him. Even that time, they will not repent. So I don't care if they thump me down. They say, oh, we don't like that kind of preacher. Why is he harsh on us? That is it. If you are going to get to heaven, you need a preacher who will tell you the truth in the face. Why should I go and pay a preacher who will lie to me and let me rot in hell? No, why would I do that? If I will not go to a doctor, a medical doctor, if I will not hire a private medical doctor, pay him only to lie to me about my health, why should I pay a preacher who will lie to me and promise me all kind of vain things and I'll be there as a fool listening? No, I won't do that. I value my soul. If you don't value your own, I'm telling you, time is not on your side. Are you listening to me? So Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, on the earth, nations will be in anguish, perplexity, and the roaring and the tossing of the sea. The sea is tossing. It tossed at Kita, it tossed at Adar, it took some of the houses away. So imagine God begin to say, Enough! The prophet Joel foretold this coming cosmic disturbances in the weather and everything in Joel chapter 2, verse 32. 31 Joel 2 32 31. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. That is what we are saying. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. We are seeing evidences of that. God is so kind that He doesn't want you to be caught otherwise. He's showing us. Are you getting it? But they are explaining it to you in a way that can make you feel comfortable. So Jesus come and take his own away. Let, the last thing I want to tell you is about the media. They have control over the international media. So they don't report the truth to you. They tell you what the elites command them to tell you. Former CBS president, Richard Sellen, said, and I quote, Our job is to give the people not what they want, but what we decide they ought to have. Unquote. Can I give you another one? Uh-huh. Catherine Graham, Washington Post publisher, and she, she ever remember, uh, she, she said, and I quote, we live in a dirty and dangerous world. There are some things the general public does not need to know. And shouldn't. I believe democracy flourishes when the government can take legitimate steps to keep it secret. And when the press can decide whether to print what it knows. Unquote. So get it. And finally, <laughs> in Germany 1991, David Rockefeller, you know, these are the world government think tanks. He said, and I quote, We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lies of publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto determination practice in past centuries. On course, so get it. They cover the media, they don't tell you the truth. Can't you see how the media works? The international media. If we want to get somebody out of power in this nation, just focus the attention on there, on that place, demonize it. Let the CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, whatever, let them demonize one party. They get it done behind the scenes. Friends, Jesus said in John 14, 13, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me. They have infiltrated everywhere in the world today. They are in governments, they are in military, they are in health systems, they are, they, are, they are marketing it, they are preparing the way. And sadly, they have infiltrated the church and they are smuggling their elements into the church to carry out their demonic biddings. But I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. God bless you for being on the rapture today. And we have ended the series on the B system. God bless you for your cooperating with us. And I want to let somebody to say, I said, Jesus Christ, time is running fast. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe everything shows that you are coming. I believe you were raised from the dead. And I believe you live forever. I believe you are coming again. I surrender my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And prepare me for your coming amen god bless you for making that decision. don't say i didn't tell you and preacher don't say i didn't come here to warn you until the same time next week it is the wrap God bless you for any inquiries about the message you've just heard. 
You can call any of the following numbers 0243 381 684 0279 935 868. To get copies of this and other messages by the preacher, call the same numbers. Don't forget the word of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 16.22. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Washing over all I see, the people sing.